story by Isaac Babel. Babel. Uh, he was a Russian Jewish writer who, in the 40s, was accused of being a spy in a Trotskyite, which he wasn't, but he was imprisoned and tortured and executed anyway. Um, and part of that was, so his, he has this really great, really interesting and tragic life story in the uh, early 1900s, around 1917. He was assigned as a government journalist to follow around the Cossacks, uh, which was sort of like a band of marauders in the Russian army. And, um, you know, they were in doing their bad things in Poland and Germany. And uh, my favorite college professor sort of likened this to an African-American man being assigned to cover the exploits of the KKK in 1917. So his, his displeasure at this experience couldn't come out in the official reports, but um, it started coming out in the fiction. And he, he mistakenly sort of had the bad judgment of naming military officers by name in some of his satirical works. And those officers rose in power over the years, which he couldn't predict. OK, so um, this story is called Grishchuk. Our second trip to the shtetl ended badly. We had set out in the cart to find some fodder, and were heading back around midday. Grishchuk's back was bobbing gently up and down before my eyes. Right outside the village, he laid his reins carefully together, sighed, and slipped down from the box, crawled over my knees, and sprawled out and crossed the cart. His cooling head rocked gently, the horses trotted on slowly, and a yellowing fabric of peace settled on his face like a shroud. Didn't eat nothing, he politely answered my cry of alarm, and wearily closed his eyelids. That was how we rolled into the village, the coachman sprawled out across the cart. At our lodgings, I gave him some bread and a potato to eat. He ate sluggishly, dozing and shaking himself awake. Then he went out into the middle of the yard and lay down on his bed, his arms spread wide. If you never tell me anything, Grishchuk, I said to him in exasperation, how am I supposed understand your pain. He said nothing and turned away. It was only that night, as we lay warming each other in the hay, that he shared with me a chapter from his mute novel. Russian prisoners of war had worked building German fortifications along the North Sea coast. During the harvest season, they were herded together and sent into the heart of Germany. A lone, crazed farmer took on Grishchuk. His madness consisted in his never speaking. He beat and starved Grishchuk until Grishchuk learned to communicate with him by hand signals. They lived together peacefully and in silence for four years. Grishchuk didn't learn the language because he never heard it spoken. After the German Revolution, he returned to Russia. His master had walked him to the edge of the village. They stopped at the side of the high road. The German pointed at the church, at his heart, at the boundless and empty blue of the horizon. He laid his gray, tussled head on Grishchuk's shoulder. They stood in a silent embrace. And then the German, throwing up his arms, ran back to his house.